So continuing on with the 5 gigahertz antenna series, this week we're going to build a double bi-quad antenna. Now I've said before in a previous video, the bi-quad antenna is probably the favourite of all my directional antennas, but uh, I've never built a 5 gigahertz bi-quad antenna, so it'll be interesting to see at the end of this video how well it performs. So the first thing we want to do before we start actually making the bi-quad antenna element is you want to get yourself a piece of this um, it's actual waste downpipe for rainwater and it seems pretty standard it's 70 millimeters diameter and I just picked this up from a local hardware store and you want to cut yourself a section off 80 millimeters long and then once you've got that you want to actually cut it in half so you end up with a piece like this so now we want to uh, choose a material to use as our back reflector now as I've shown you before, you don't have to use metal, this is a piece of plastic and what we can do once we've cut it out to size is actually cover it in some aluminium foil and it will, will work just as well as a copper clad board as a reflector although if you've got some copper clad laying around you can uh, use that as well And uh, but like I've shown um, in previous videos there's no performance gain from actually using copper or aluminium or some old tin or anything like that but, um, now we've actually got this cut out, we can use this as a template to uh, cut out our back reflector, but before we do that, what we want to do is actually uh, mark out these curves for the edges. So if you just place it on whatever material you've chosen and just draw the curve around and then go ahead and cut that out now you don't have to be that accurate I've used a jigsaw to cut mine out but just make sure you stay on this side of the black line now the reason you cut these two pieces out first is because like I said we can now use this to cut our back reflector out as a template but what we're going to do is just butt those two up against the side so we get them in the length as well and that way you get it cut out with uh, a couple of lips on either side for these two to actually sit on so use this together with this and then draw around and then cut out a back reflector so now we've got our back reflector actually cut out using this as a template and leaving enough room on the sides so these will sit on the edges like so now as I said you don't have to be too accurate cutting those out because we'll get rid of all that with a sanding block later when we construct it so now we've got um, our back reflector we uh, want to drill a hole through the middle of this before we put any silver foil on because if you put the silver foil aluminium foil on here and then drill a hole potentially it could end up tearing it so uh, we drill the hole first so what I've done, I've gone ahead and sprayed some contact cement onto this uh, plastic backing here. Um, you can use anything really, but I'd stay away from water-based uh, kind of um, glues like a Pritt stick because uh, it does have a tendency to peel away after time. So the best way to do this is to lay a piece of kitchen towel down, place the silver foil on there, and then push down nice and firmly and once it's down get all the air bubbles out and rub it around on the kitchen towel get it nice and smooth make sure it's all well stuck down so we end up like that so now we're going to cut this out also make a slight indentation there where the hole is so to cut out the hole if you just work inwards making little cuts like this then uh, you won't tear it and then what we can do is just poke that through like that so we get a good contact with the BNC connector then so now we've got the reflector done we uh, can now go ahead and connect the BNC connector up to the reflector and also I have a little bracket here you can find these at your local hardware store little angle right angle brackets and I've just chopped this end off a little bit because I don't need it that long 
and also drilled out a hole big enough so the BNC connector will fit through it and that way the nut on the BNC connector and everything will hold this bracket in place so we don't have to drill any more holes in it and also when you're tightening it up try and make sure that your nut actually finishes with a flat side pointing downwards with uh, the solder tag at the bottom here because we'll bend that solder tag up and we want to get it quite close to the actual centre element there so to make the actual element itself you're going to need some copper wire now I got some copper wire out of this um, electrical cable that uh, I bought three meters of it for three pounds so it wasn't very expensive and I just stripped out the copper wire I've got um, just over 300 millimeters length here and that's going to be plenty to actually make the element for the bi quad so to construct the element you're going to want some needle nose pliers and try and find some like this that have a, a large flat surface that you can bend onto to get your right angle bends as opposed to these these uh, only have a really small flat surface here they're not really um, it's really a pain making it with uh, a pair like these so try and find a pair like this and also so we're not measuring off each element because uh, we want two measurements for this we actually want a, a quarter wavelength which is 12.93 uh, millimeters so it's really really small and I'm building this bi quad right at the top of the uh, 5 gigahertz spectrum at 5.8 gigahertz so 12.93 millimeters and I also want half wavelength which is 25.86 millimeters so those are the two measurements we're going to be working with it's just if you take your time to get a hard piece of plastic like this and um, cut them off and measure them precisely then you're not having to do it each time each time you uh, put a bend in your element so to start off what I do I just put a right angle bend in there I don't bother measuring this bit here I just make sure I've left enough um, so I can uh, measure it and cut it away at the end so we're going to put our first bend in and if you get your little measuring tool like this and you can get it flush up against that first right handle bend like that and you can take needle nose pliers with a flat side and you can actually then get a really good measurement by just doing that so I know that is exactly 12.93 millimeters so what I'm going to do I'm going to put the first bend in this way and bend up against my needle nose pliers like that so that's my first bend so because this is going to actually be a double bi quad antenna we want half wavelength now so get your little measuring tool again and butt it up against your pliers like so and once you're happy you've got it right remove that and then bend up so it looks like that so now we go back to using quarter wavelength And again, once you're happy, you've got it right. Bend it like that. You can straighten all these out a little bit more at the end. Again, a quarter wavelength. bend down so it's crossed over like that bow tie effect there now where this is crossed over what we're going to do so they don't touch is we're going to put some heat shrink on there just so uh, like I say they're not touching because that will cancel out your actual element itself So we're doing a half wavelength again to 
bend inwards. So we've got that effect like that. And then we're going to put quarter wave length here and bend this way. like that. So quarter wavelength here again and bend that way. So I've just put the heat shrink on there but uh, I'm not going to shrink it yet until we get our bends in and the other element is underneath bend it that way so now a quarter Like that, now quarter again. So we'll go it like that. Now I'll just shrink this heat shrink now. And we're going to go half wavelength on here and bend it that way. So, final bend quarter wavelength. It's get tricky, make space to get in. actually want to bend this down just trim that excess off so what we're going to do now is solder these two legs together and then we can straighten it out a little bit more And also put a little solder in here just to tin it up and make it easier to connect the element. So that's the element I've soldered up in there and I've also tinned in this bend here so uh, we can connect it to our BNC connector but uh, just before we do I'm going to go in and double check all these sides again get them nice and square and uh, get any kinks and bends out of it so it's laying flat. So the gap from the element to this back reflector I actually want this to be a quarter wavelength as well so what I've done I've just extended this center pin a little bit put some copper wire in there and I'm just fitting it in without soldering it in at the moment and just checking and just trimming back this leg here a little bit at a time to keep the element straight while I solder it in I've cut a little piece of cardboard here exactly to a quarter wavelength and I'm going to place that in like that and lay the element on top so then I can get in with my soldering iron and solder onto this centre pin and it should all be at the right height there and I can just uh, go and straighten out these ends then afterwards so I've got my driven element now and I'm quite happy with it it's um, I've gone in and straightened it all up and uh, just do a couple of close-up shots of that so 
So normally on a 2.4 gigahertz double bi quad, the element is that long. You have to put some kind of uh, supports at the ends so it doesn't actually bend. But uh, this is rigid enough to hold itself up, no problem at all. So now what's left to do is we're going to epoxy the cover straight onto the shield and then when that's dry then epoxy the sides on as well. So I've finished sanding and uh, brought all the edges down nice and level um, following the contour of this plastic pipe. So uh, just got in there with a sanding block, wasn't too difficult. And I've also rubbed up uh, the front of the plastic pipe as well and the sides here because uh, I'm just going to go and give it a coat of paint now. So here is the antenna, all finished with some matte black paint and I've mounted it on this tripod and I'm really really pleased with this antenna. One of the um, biggest problems with a bi-quad antenna is what kind of housing to put it in to protect uh, the actual element and you don't actually want it looking like uh, recycled Tupperware or an old CD spindle but uh, with this design I think it looks uh, rather neat. So I think we'll hook it up to the Alpha card now and we'll give it a test and just see how powerful it is. So the stock rubber duck antenna we're getting about 74% it seems to have dropped off now. See if it settles down and connects again. So what I'll do, I'll uh, disconnect this rubber duck antenna and I'll connect the bi quad and we'll see what kind of performance we get. Oh, so it shot up. Oh. I wasn't expecting that kind of performance. The uh, 5 gigahertz spectrum is not as strong as the uh, 2.4 gigahertz, but uh, this by quad antenna now it's settled down. Let's jump back up again. It's doing an excellent job. So it seems to have settled down around 95%. up and down a little bit but it's still a strong signal that's um, probably down to the distance like I say 5 gigahertz doesn't travel as far as 2.4 gigahertz I'm just moving it around a little bit to try and find a sweet spot there we go so I'm well pleased with that so it's well worth building so if you enjoyed that, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you next time.